You love justice and hate evil. For this reason, your God has anointed you with the oil of joy, elevating you above your companions. Be angry and do not sin. There can hardly be goodness in a man if he is not angry at sin. He who loves truth must be angry at every false way. How our Lord Jesus hated it when the temptation came. Three times it attacked him in different forms, but each time he met it with, Get behind me, Satan. He hated it also in others, nonetheless fervently, because he showed his hate oftener in tears of pity than in words of rebuke. Yet, what language could be more stern, more Elijah-like than the words, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you devour a widow's house, and for a pretense make long prayers. He hated wickedness so much that he bled it to wound it to the heart. He died that it might die. He was buried that he might bury it in his tomb. He rose that he might forever trample it beneath his feet. Christ is the gospel, and that gospel is opposed absolutely to wickedness in every shape. Wickedness arrays itself in fair garments and imitates the language of holiness. But the precepts of Jesus, like his famous scourge of small cords, chase it out of the temple and will not tolerate it in the church. So too, in the hearts where Jesus reigns, what war there is between Christ and Belial. When our Redeemer shall come to be our judge, those thundering words, Depart, you cursed, which are indeed but a prolongation of his life teaching concerning sin, shall manifest his abhorrence of iniquity. As warm as is his love to sinners, so hot is his hatred of sin. As perfect as his righteousness, so complete shall be the destruction of every form of wickedness. O you, most glorious champion of right, destroyer of wrong, for this cause has God, even your God, anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Amen.